Fursuits are unique costumes made for someone in the furry community to express themselves in the real world. We all have seen at least an image of someone in a fursuit, but what you probably don't think of is who actually created the suit, which often is not the same person walking around in it. Most people don't have the time or skill to create their own fursuit, so they pay someone else a good chunk of change to create one for them. Be aware of who you're supporting as some of the people who make fursuits do the most disgusting, vile, and unforgivable acts behind closed doors. Lockjaw Arts is a company run by two furries, Tanya Dillard, a trans man who also goes by Vex, Vincent, Blackcraft Witch, and many other names, and his partner Jacob Berkowitz, who is also referred to as Jax or Luna. The company itself is pretty standard, selling art pieces of your character in a variety of custom fursuit attire like paws, tails, heads, and even full suits with prices ranging from $20 to $2,000 depending on what you buy. Warning by the way for anyone who wants to purchase something from them, it's probably going to be a while before your order can be fulfilled as these two are probably both behind bars. On March 27, 2020, a friend of the couple named Paige received a disturbing message in the morning from Tanya saying how he and Jacob had killed and skinned a dog. Things would only get worse as the conversation continued as Tanya would respond to one of Paige's messages with, if you think that is strange. I'm sitting next to a dead body. Paige would press Tanya on why she was next to a dead body, and Tanya would then explain to her how he and Jacob met a man on Craigslist in order to get a ride to California. At some point during the car ride, the man would allegedly attempt to kiss Tanya, which infuriated Jacob, causing him to beat the man and then shoot him in the head. The bullet would accidentally hit Tanya's finger, and to prove he wasn't lying, Tanya would send Paige pictures of the dead man and his bloodied finger. Paige would immediately go to the police with this information, which led to the police quickly setting up surveillance at the couple's home in Las Vegas, where they would observe them both leaving their house in the victim's car. A traffic stop was made and when questioned, Jacob would admit that the body of the victim was still in their bathroom. The couple was taken into custody where the real story was told. Tanya would explain how it was all pre-planned and that they had set up a Craigslist ad to lure in someone with the promise of sex with the couple. Once they met up with their victim, they would rob and kill them. A man named Hector Menendez Hernandez would unfortunately respond to this ad and would drive both of them back to his place where he would suffer a violent death. According to Jacob, he had shot Menendez twice in the head, stabbed him 25 times, and then beat him with a dumbbell. After murdering the man in cold blood, the couple would have tried to live out in the woods if they weren't caught by the police. Both Tanya and Jacob were charged with murder with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to commit a murder, robbery with a deadly weapon, and conspiracy to commit a robbery. What their final sentence is is unknown to me, but it's safe to say that they will be spending a good amount of time in prison. While the last couple was relatively small and unknown until their crimes were exposed, Lucky Coyote or Blonde Foxy, along with her partner Scuff Coyote, were once at the top of the game, with their company DHC or Don't Hug Cacti gaining massive popularity in the furry community for their high quality fursuits. Although their infamy would come to an end on the 25th of September 2020, when a Twitter user by the name of Qtins would post a 93 page long document filled with anonymous testimonies against Lucky Coyote. The document would detail the alleged actions of Lucky Coyote, which include sexual assault, grooming of minors, zoophilia, and animal abuse. For the sake of time, I will only discuss the sexual assault part of the document briefly, as it's the one I found the most disheartening. An anonymous user going by Fox would begin talking to Lucky Coyote when they were 19 years old. Lucky would invite Fox to draw while she would work on fursuits and they became closer friends after some time. Although even during these early times some red flags did begin to show as during late night calls Lucky Coyote would strangely begin showing Fox furry porn and even began drawing porn of their character which Fox themselves did not do. 
One night, Fox and Lucky Coyote were supposed to go to a party, but Lucky Coyote would instead convince Fox to head back to her place in order to test their limit. Back at Lucky's place, the two would drink excessively, and eventually, when they were both drunk, Lucky Coyote would begin asking personal questions to Fox. To make Fox feel more comfortable, Lucky Coyote would then reveal some of her own secrets about herself, like how she used to have sex with animals, and how she used to represent her character with a zoophile calling card. The calling card in question was a paw placed on the hip of a character which would represent when an animal would place their paw upon mounting the individual. Later on in the night, Lucky Coyote and Fox would get intimate, and while I obviously can't go into detail on what took place, the experience was not enjoyable for Fox, who made multiple attempts to end the session early, but Lucky did not stop until Fox faked being done. To make the situation even worse for Fox, the next day Lucky Coyote was bragging and boasting about their encounter and even shared some of Fox's secrets to other people. Lucky Coyote would make a response video to the document in which he tries to disprove the allegations. I go by Blonde Foxy or Lucky Coyote online. Many of you in our community have seen the recent rash of extreme and outrageous attacks against me and my company, Don't Hug Cacti. As I will demonstrate, these attacks are being orchestrated by a few individuals who I trusted in the past and who are now hell-bent on destroying me and my company for their own personal gain. Although her attempts to disprove the allegations was not enough as the majority of the community still believed the document to be mostly true. Her own company, DHC, in order to ease the backlash, has distanced themselves from Lucky Coyote. Blonde Foxy is not the owner of DHC. She had left social media several weeks ago and has been receiving treatment for social media addiction and other personal issues. While she was a part of our infancy, we are grateful for her artistic contributions. Although, being that she created the business, any profits the business makes would probably still go to Lucky Coyote or her partner. Kind of cheating with this one as carpet samples or shadow wolf s doesn't sell any fur suits although you wouldn't want to buy any of his suits if he did anyways bill clark aka carpet samples is at the time of this video a 67 year old man and is probably one of the most disgusting people i read about both metaphorically and literally to start things off he is a plushophile self-admitted now what is a plushophile well, a plushophile is someone who generally finds sexual attraction to plushies and will use them whenever they are in the mood. Like I said, Bill is one of these people. Although, once he is done with the plushie, instead of seeking a therapist, he would instead use the soiled fur of the plushie to construct his multiple fur suits. Even worse is that he would wear these disgusting suits to furry conventions which already smelled bad enough, in these conventions some unfortunate individuals came into close contact with this disgusting man, one of them being a woman named Moonstone who was accompanied by her handicap assistance dog. Bill would ask Moonstone if she would allow him to use her dog for sexual purposes. Moonstone would refuse and would report this incident to the convention getting Bill banned. As you may have inferred based on his question, Bill is also a proud zoophile. Wolf Grr, hi there first. I'm a zoo and I love my partners without question. Love large and medium dogs and calves. Mini ponies? Pygmy goats? I prefer to be on top. Bill has boasted about his multiple sexual interactions with dogs in disturbing detail when he used to work as a dog walker. Now the way he gets his victims is by posting Craigslist ads for people to drop off their unwanted canines at his residence where they would be violated by Bill no doubt. To make things even worse, Bill doesn't stop at animals and is also a pedophile as he had solicited a minor for sex in exchange for alcohol. I can really only hope that this guy has finally kicked the bucket cause if not he's a legitimate threat to children and animals. While the furries I mentioned are some of the worst people the community has to offer, obviously the majority of the furry fandom are not like this and actually do condemn these people for their actions. Pretty sure some of the other weird fandoms they have people just as bad or even worse as this 
which I will talk about whenever I find out in some happier news. We hit around 400 subs uh, last week, I think. I did talk about it when I made my EDP video, but that video got taken down for cyberbullying and harassment. That's actually something that happened to a lot of YouTube creators who talked about it. For some reason, YouTube is protecting EDP. I don't know why. There's nothing that I can do about it, so I kind of just have to deal with it. So that's why I'm saying it again in this video, which I think will get a lot more attention anyways. So thank you guys so much for supporting my videos and channel. But besides that, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.